This portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a mold from your sculpture. Um, we'll, I'll be setting up these four figures right here. As you can see, one of them is already partially set up for molds. The other one has a base and is kind of set up for a mold. And these two aren't, there's nothing been done to them. Uh, it just so happens I do have four figures that I can I can do a mold of. Now uh, these first uh, two figures here, the the reason I haven't done anything to them is just to kind of illustrate the difference between the two molds that we're going to make. Now this is going to be a two-piece mold, similar to the small one. This is going to be a two-piece mold, but it's going to be on a grander scale and it's going to have a shell around it. So it's going to be a little bit different than this two-piece mold which is not going to have a shell because of its size and the type of silicon rubber I'm using. This, however, this, this figure here, the 7 8 scale figure, he's uh, just going to be a uh, one-part mold. And uh, uh, a one-part mold is basically a mold that looks like this mold here. And as you can see it's just one part. Uh, it's slipped right down here and you pour through there and you pull once the figure is done you pull the figure out of here. Uh, he'll be in a mold like that. Bigger of course because he's 7 8 and this is for a 120 uh, scale figure. And uh, one part molds are are easier in a way to make. They're a little bit harder to uh, cast, uh, depending upon the piece. So anyway, that's the two types of molds we're doing, and uh, it's the one part mold and the two part mold. Okay, the first two molds we're going to do are one piece molds, and it's for my Mark Twain guy and my little 120th scale uh, passenger named Harriet. Um, the items you see in this frame are pretty much what you're going to need to set this mold up. Um, two pieces of wood that they'll rest on and uh, two types of clay. Now sometimes you can get away with one type of clay and that's fine. Uh, Harriet, for example, she's already got a base that's a polyurethane base and that base is not going to melt so I can pretty much just melt it into place on this board and uh, just like this is and uh, it's going to be fine. Mark Twain however doesn't so I use this different harder clay. This green stuff is hard and it the heat it's not affected by heat as much and, and part of this process you're going to need to apply heat to this mold so your your base should really be something to keep it you know something hard to keep it uh, uh, from moving around inside and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about as, as we progress here uh, anyway I like to reuse clay and uh, this wood over and over again because uh, waste not want not and you know money's cheap. Now I use this red plasticine that you can get at any hobby store. Um, it's very very soft as you can see and when you hit it with a hot gun it melts right away. And you're probably asking well, well why do you need to hit it with a hot gun? And just be patient and you'll see. Um, the thing is though is it's not sulfur free plasticine. Uh, not like this. This is sulfur-free plasticine, as you can see. Now it's also, you can get it hard or you can get it soft. This is soft. Uh, the reason I don't use the green, even though it's sulfur-free, is because uh, in the two-part process, and sometimes, you know, even when you're setting up these molds, in the two-part process, when you're applying the mold around, well, you'll see later, in the two-part process, this uh, dramatic color really pays off when you're cleaning up the piece for the second half of the mold. 
Uh, in this case, it, it pays off because you can see if you've gotten any of this splattered on your piece while, while you're, you're setting it up. So I use this color. Anything, anytime I'm going to come in contact with the figure, I use this red. Uh, this, is, this is hard. This is much harder than that soft stuff back there, but it's also sulfur-free. But you, like I said, you can get both of these sulfur-free soft and hard. You don't need to get the red plasticine if the sulfur is really going to be a major concern of yours. Uh, this red plasticine, I, I think you can only get it in soft. And once it gets heated up, it's really soft. It doesn't hold a shape. And I used to sculpt in clay. And this hard stuff is great because you can almost carve it. You can see it's really kind of brittle until you get it a little warm. So anyway, these are the things you'll need. You'll also need some cardstock paper. This stuff here is what you're going to make the uh, walls of the mold out of. So you'll need that and a pencil. Right now I'm getting ready to apply the uh, I guess you'd call it glue. To the foot of mold plane here. I like to melt a little bit of uh, clay onto the sole of the foot because that way when you put the clay sprue it seems to stick better than if the, there was no melted clay here at all. Putting these sprues on is uh, very time consuming if you want to do it right. The uh, detail on the sole of the shoe is very tricky. See, the sprue is the only way you can get your resin in and the air out. So you have to have a balance between detail and function. This function, I should say. So it's very too much of a line that I'm making right here with this tool that my hand homemade tool. If it's too deep, you're going to have too much of a ridge and it'll trap bubbles and it will restrict the uh, flow of fluid and air. But not deep enough and you're not going to be able to tell where your sprue begins or where your sprue ends and your sole begins. Fortunately, this is a 7 eighths piece which is a, on an average about an inch taller, an inch and a, I think an inch and three eighths or something taller than the uh, one twentieth scale pieces. So the feet are bigger too. And you've, you've got more to play with on this. And you've got to take your time on this part. Took your time on your sculpture, take your time on setting it up. 